Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Disney's Return of the Headless Horseman was a game I didn't know much about. We were in a local comic book store, as my daughter likes to go there, and I saw this game on the shelf among some other Disney-esque games, and we're big Disney fans living here in Orlando. I grew up on the Headless Horseman with Ichabod Crane cartoon, and I think it's phenomenal. So when I saw the game, I was like, yes, this is a must-have. I looked at the back of the box, and it looked like a children's game, which is fine because I have kids, and we play those a lot here, as you know from the channel. But I thought, hey, this might turn out really well. Hmm. But what did I get instead? I got a game with some phenomenal Disney artwork. This game in the production is fantastic for what amounted to a $20 game. I got two pretty good miniatures, a spinner that works fantastic, very colorful board, and that Disney artwork on the cards and the card quality is very good. I have zero complaints about the components in this game. Zero. They look phenomenal. Especially, especially for what was a $20 game. Excellent. Wow. Okay, let's get to the gameplay. The gameplay is a little thinky. So I think that adults, if adults had to play this, we'd be able to, without even talking, you're not allowed to have table talk about the cards in your hand, figure out, like, don't play a five, don't play a four. We'd be able to figure that out. But sometimes you've got the cards that are in your hand, and guess what? You're stuck with them. So everybody's going to play a card face down and then flip them over at the same time. If, the car, if at least two of the cards match, you will move that amount. If more than two cards match, it'll be whatever number is the lowest. Then at the bottom, we'll have numbers where Headless Horseman will move, and he'll move and kind of chase you down. There's going to be eight tiles at the side, and as he as he catches you or certain things on the board happen, you'll flip those over. So you can have really bad luck. The first four you flip over could be the losing condition. Probably not likely, but it could happen. And I've had games where they were the last four we pulled over, and that gave us quite an advantage. So there's a little bit of a swing right there, and that can be good or bad. It's a 15, 10, 15 minute game you're going to play predominantly with your children. I don't think adults, other than just like, hey, I want to play this with adults more as uh, to be ironic or something or hipster. I don't think adults are going to sit down and play this game. Maybe the most gateway of gateway. But with that said, the game isn't bad. I mean, there is a game here that's kind of fun because you can't have table talk and you're playing those cards down and then kind of seeing what happens. So in that regard, for a 15-minute filler where people are showing up for game night. Really, it's not bad. Uh, it does have that cool Halloween theme. I'm going to put this in my Halloween Disney collection, and we're going to play this around the Halloween. Maybe watch the cartoon with it. It's a double feature. That could be a lot of fun. The game itself is, is fine. It's not a spin and move. Just, cause, just because it has a spinner, don't think it is. That spinner is used to add cards to your hand. And there is one section where you put Ichabod on it when he goes in, and he's all disoriented and discombobulated, where you spin it around very thematic, and he ends up on a certain part of the board, either helping him or, or not helping him as much, really. Very cool game. It's a race game. You're trying to get to the end before Headless Horseman can get those tiles flipped over. i got to admit, I really like this one. It plays a lot different than most of the kitty kind of family games. It has a really neat mechanism to it. Aces for us. But keep in mind, it's going to be a family-type game or a children's game. More, there's going to be something to sit down and play with your buddies. So just kind of be aware of that. Keep it for us. So here is Disney's Return of the Headless Horseman game. I gotta admit, uh, this box art is fantastic. I like it a lot, a, quite a bit. And this kind of has a little shine to it. Not sure if it comes across on camera or not. I'm gonna get a, a rule book, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. And this will be the board. You're gonna have a little picture here with the story starting on the board. And then this will pop out. And it's gonna look like your classic mass market children's game with like a little track that's going on here and uh, some things over here you can kind of go up. You're going to have the spinner here, which is kind of cute. And then you're going to get some miniatures with it. This will be the Headless Horseman. You can see here his hand is the pumpkin. It's a different color, which is a nice touch. You're going to have Ichabod Crane himself. Everybody will be using one mover, so you'll be using Ichabod. Pretty nice little models for a mass market game. You're going to have the tree spinner that will fit on here, and this thing actually works very well. You're going to have a number of tiles, which you'll be utilizing there in the game. One side will have the horse, because he's afraid. The other side will have uh, these pictures on it. You're trying to build this pumpkin that will come out. And then you're going to have the cards. And this will be the main mechanism that you're using throughout the game. And it has some fantastic Disney artwork on it. So you can see here that it just looks great. And it's like he's dreaming and thinking of each one as he's riding through. Uh, and some of them get more dangerous as you go on. This will be the difficulty level in the game. It's a nice little tile. It's not really a card. I like the components in here. I think they're really nice. It really pops. I like the use of purple in this, and the colors are fantastic. 
Here is the instruction manual. It looks like a book, which is a really nice touch. As you open it up, you're gonna have kind of how to install the spinner, setup of the game, and how to win. It's also a QR code if you wanna learn how to uh, play, and the win-loss conditions are done with pictures, which is great. How to play gives you a little bit of an overview. You can see pictures of the icons and kind of how everything works. Um, not a lot of examples per se, but it's a fairly easy little kids game to have a split pass and a game. If you want to make the game less or more challenging, depending on your kids' level, it's fantastic and some nice artwork at the end. And this is your victory place you'll be trying to get to at the end of the story. Rulebook is really good. Probably need about five, ten minutes to read through it. You'll be up and running. So the game's been pretty easy. You're going to stick this from underneath it, and you're going to take the tree, and it's going to have a little hole there, and you just put it right there and he'll spin around. The horseman will start here. Ichabod will start on this track right here. Take your A tile, shuffle these up face down, and this will be the difficulty level. You can choose the two or the four. Four is gonna be harder, so I would recommend sticking with two. I found that to be hard enough. What Ichabod is doing, he's gonna to try to get through this whole path, and if he gets up here before the headless horseman gets him, he wins. And if the headless horseman is able to get over four of these that has the pumpkin on it, then you will lose the game. So that's how you're going to lose by getting the four pumpkin ones over. So what we'll do is we'll shuffle these up and I'll kind of show you how this is played. Then you'll shuffle up the deck. Each player will draw four cards from the top and that will be your starting hand. To play the game is fairly easy. Each player will choose a card from their hand and they will place it face down. Then let's say you're playing a two player game. Everybody reveal the cards at the same time. If they match, that's good news because Ichabod can move. One, two, three, four, five, six on the track. If you land on the symbols, something will happen. If you land on one of the ones that aren't, don't have a symbol on it, nothing happens. So if you land on this one, then you simply spin this around and you get to move whatever extra spaces it lands on. If you land on the horse, then you flip over one of the horse tiles and you're potentially one step closer to losing the game. If you land on one of these uh, shortcuts, then just kind of like shoots and ladders, you get to move up through the shortcut. So there's going to be three potential spots. The only little spot that's going to make a difference here is if you get on this spot, you can see there's a little bit of a hole here on Ichabod. You will put him here, you will spin this around, and whatever one he lands on is the spot that he will go. If he had landed, let's say here, then you would have went over to that spot. When the Headless Horseman comes through, he does not go that way. Instead, he goes on the longer track, potentially, to catch up to you. Now, when you play these two cards, if they match, the, the Ichabod will move. Let's say the two cards do not match, then he does not move. Then you would play two additional cards, which is fine. So let's say these two cards were playing on the second turn. Whatever the lowest number is that matches in this time, you would move four instead of six. So one, two, three, four, activating the position. Then you're going to look at the bottom of all cards played, and the horseman will move this many times. So 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. And then the question mark will move depending on what the difficulty is you selected. So 2, 4, 6, 7. So the headless horseman will move 7 spaces. Then you will discard these cards, and the game will proceed. If you only ever have one card in your hand, you will say Ichabod. You will spin the spinner and then you will draw that number of cards. I drew one, so I will draw one card, and now I have two to choose from in my hand. This will continue until the win condition, which Ichabod gets all the way up there, or the losing condition where all four pumpkins are known. And that's how you play Return of the Headless Horseman. Who should buy this game? Uh, fans of Disney, fans of the Headless Horseman, so the IP, all the fans of the IP. But this is a really good like children family game, one I can highly recommend. It's very fun, it plays very quickly, can play very young kids. Oh, they're probably not gonna do as well with those young kids because they might not understand some of the strategy in it, but that's fine, you're here to have a good time with your kids. You're not here to win a board game, necessarily. But you can kind of help them out, and I know you're not, the rules say no tabletop, but with the really younger ones, like a five-year-old, maybe look, Nobody wants to play a five because if you play a five, you're, you know, and, and you're also teaching them strategies of how to play games and how to see things that are happening on the board. And that's pretty cool. Excellent production. Really, really fun game. One that we have liked a lot. So we recommend this one, Return of the Headless Horseman.